motivation for learning. And I think a lot of teachers ask this in their classes. How do I motivate my students to learn? What are some ways that I can motivate them? The reason why I'm talking about motivation on an educational technology podcast is because a lot of times people think that technology is what motivates students. It's the bells and whistles, right? They get to see a cool animation. They get to hear a cool noise or whatever else the technology offers. So motivation and technology have often been linked as a good learning tool. We've thought that technology should be there because it motivates students to learn. Let's use technology to motivate students. So, but that's not necessarily the case. Motivation and technology don't always go hand in hand. And really what motivates students is not necessarily the technology. It's the deeper concepts of motivation that could come through use of technology or without that we're going to talk about today. Okay, so again, motivation is not necessarily provided by technology. It's provided by what the technology could offer or may offer, the principles of motivation that have been discovered through research and through study. And so what I want to do is talk first about intrinsic versus extrinsic motivation and differentiate these two terms and then talk about a model to support motivation in your classroom and then tie it back into how technology might be a motivating factor as long as it uses those principles of motivation. So first of all, intrinsic versus extrinsic motivation. And I'll start with extrinsic motivation. Extrinsic motivation is not the good kind of motivation. When you're trying to motivate somebody to learn extrinsically, then you're maybe offering like a piece of candy when they finish their task. So extrinsic motivation means that the student is motivated outside of his or herself. Like there's something extrinsic to the student that is motivating him or her to learn. And research has found actually that this is not a very powerful way of motivating students. That if they are not intrinsically trying to learn on their own type of motivation, if they're being motivated extrinsically, that this is not a very good way for them to be motivated. It, it's not very effective. Intrinsic motivation, on the other hand, is motivation that helps comes from within the student. And so when we're intrinsically motivating someone, we're trying to take advantage of that motivation that's already within the student to do good or to learn. And we're just maybe enhancing it a little bit with the way that we present materials, with the way that we do things. So those are the two different types of uh, motivation. Again, extrinsic is motivation that comes from outside of the student. And intrinsic is motivation that comes from within the student to want to learn. Although you can help support intrinsic motivation and I'm going to talk about a model for intrinsic motivation right now. So Malone and Leper, many years ago actually, this is an oldie but goodie, but Malone and Leper created this nice little model of intrinsic motivation. It's a taxonomy is what they actually call it, taxonomy of intrinsic motivations and ways that teachers can support motivation intrinsically for students not just giving them a piece of candy or giving them an external reward for their learning, but to help support their intrinsic motivation to learn. And so what they do is they provide some design principles or principles that teachers can do to promote various sources of intrinsic motivation when we're teaching and learning. And again, this is an article that came out uh, over 20 years ago, but it's still a very good article for helping people to be motivated with learning, and we still go back to this a lot in the literature. Okay, so what are the elements of the model then? Well, first is control. Promote students' sense of control over the activity. So again, we're talking about intrinsic motivation versus extrinsic. If a student feels like he or she is intrinsically in control of some aspects of an activity, then that can support their intrinsic motivation. If the activity is of initial intrinsic interest, then don't add extrinsic things onto it because students are already interested in it, right? Don't add something that might ruin the activity. If the activity is of little initial intrinsic interest, then maybe, yeah, some extrinsic things might help. But you want to help embed some controls in the activity where students can actually kind of have a feeling or a sense of control over the activity that they're kind of in charge. They can maybe, maybe they can make a choice of how they're going to complete the activity or how they're going to present the material or how they're going to do something. That helps to support intrinsic motivation for learning. 